She'd been watching them for weeks. Lingering in the shadows unseen had always been a school of hers, remaining unchosen and unnoticed. It paid off now as Asa stood against the shadow of a wall, the people walking the bustling streets strolling by unbothered. A performer bust in the street, gathering a group of people who watched as he created bubbles in the shape of animals out of his mouth. What a harmless power. What a life he must have lived. Asa rolled her eyes and turned her attention to the skyscraper which served as the headquarters for the Classifying Powers organization, where the group she had been watching disappeared into. She'd first heard of them from the news. Their message had come at a time where the world was grey and cold, when Asa had sat in the small corner of the apartment her mother paid for but never visited, gathering dust like an ornament on a shelf, waiting for life to feel alive. The noise of the television had caught her attention, the shifting of her eyes spurring life in her body. Her ears began to translate the waves into sounds, the words of the news reporter sparking something within her. Her creaking bones managed to move, making their way to the screen, the headline reading, Third attack on the CPO, ideologically motivated. The group of villains vandalised three officers belonging to the classifying powers organisation, CPO, spray-painting a message across the front of the building in purple, reading, We're humans who? Detectives believe it is a reference to the ideals of visionary Marcus Yerwin, who stated the classification of powers would lead to the alienation of humans, with no one left to remind them they're human too, making this attack ideologically motivated. Asa knew the words of Yerwin, who had been one of the few influential voices to speak out against the idea of the class system of powers 30 years ago. The class system took small children, only beginning to understand their own powers, and listed them as either safe and harmless, or too dangerous for society, requiring constant mon monitoring and controlling like lab rats. They labelled Asa as a monster. The purple circle marked against the pale skin of the back of her hand was impossible to hide, branding her as a high-level power owner. Some avoided and dodged her, or even worse, some aggravated her to the point of violence. It always came from those with the pink marks which signified them as a low level. Asa began to twitch just thinking about how different her life could have been without the curse of the purple mark, without the organisation who'd cursed her with it. But now, now there was someone out there trying to fight back, someone trying to open the eyes of society, willing to tear at the CPO's walls. Something unlocked in Asa's mind, a dark box that had been secret even to her. Every mention of these villains, the self-proclaimed liberators, made Asa's heart race. They targeted officers and buildings belonging to the CPO, and by tracking their movements, it became clear where they were going to head for next. The CPO's main location, right in the middle of her city. It had taken a few days of searching to find them. She was sure the local gangs would know if they'd come to the city yet, since they weren't very welcoming of strangers, but they didn't seem like people willing to give out information for free. Instead, she warmed her hands by fires and drums under bridges, talking to anyone in the nightlife who'd listened to her, discovering the whispers of sightings. Buddy of mine said he saw the blue-haired guy hanging around the docks, a man said, sipping the warm drink Asa had offered to share with him. Everyone around her is willing to leave them and let them do their thing, even the gangs. They want to get into that place? Good luck to them. They've beefed up their security tenfold. Asa found them in an abandoned warehouse by the docks. Her heart fluttered to see them. The blue-haired boy with the ability to create smoke from his body. The girl with the box braid and scarred face who could intercept meteor waves. And the blonde girl whose fingers could transform into whips. And sitting in the center of them was their leader. Their body was thin and sun-kissed, hair cropped short and dark, their eyes a striking blue. Asa felt a strange pull to them, perhaps a side effect of their ability, mind control. Any words spoken from their lips had to be obeyed. No wonder law enforcement was so desperate to take these people down. If there was anything the CPO feared, it was someone else having control. Asa watched them every day, followed their every movement. She learnt their names, or at least their code names, the blue head boy going by Smoke Bomb, the girl with the scarred face, the Interceptor, and the girl with the whips going by Whip. They referred to their leader as Control. Their plan was conjured, the day and time they would strike, every action and threat thought through. Ace's dead heart raced with the anticipation of their success. With a plan like this, surely they had to succeed. Asa imagined the look on the CPO's face from a group they'd persecuted infiltrated them. She relished in it. 
Asa kept her eyes on the exit of the CPO's headquarters, where the Liberators would make their escape. She pulled out her white hair, wondering what was going on inside. The watch on her wrist said it was 12.28, only a few more moments before they would be breaking into the CPO's broadcast room, playing their video to the masses. Everyone would hear the message of their words, about the class system and how it destroyed people's lives, all on the basis of something they were born with and couldn't choose. She frowned at her watch again. Had something gone wrong? Her phone was open on CPO's social media where they plugged all their propaganda bullshit, and was displaying nothing but propaganda bullshit. They'd been planning this for weeks. How could they have failed? The sound of screens caught Ace's attention. Her eyes widened as four black squad cars came racing down the main street and sliding to a stop. Armed soldiers jumped out the car, equipped with guns and gas masks, causing people to run and flee. Asa froze. No. No, no, no. How had they gotten caught? The Liberators came racing through the front doors of the building, whips activated, smoke billowing. They saw the cars, saw the soldiers, and went to run. But before they got a chance, a soldier appeared from behind, lunging for their leader. They clamped something around Control's mouth, Control thrashing and pulling at their mouth to get the clamp off. Whips shredded the soldier's body, causing him to stagger back, but the damage was already done. With their mouth clamped, Control couldn't use their power. A bang cracked through the air, a shot firing out. It all happened so quickly, Control staggering back, blood splattering from their chest, the blue-haired boy concealing everything and plumes of smoke the soldiers had prepared for with gas masks. Why did they open fire without warning? Had the Liberators really struck so much fear? The smoke began to clear, revealing an empty spot where they once stood. Soldiers began running in various directions trying to catch up with them, their guns heavy in their arms. With a bullet wound like that, control would bleed out. If they died, the group would fall apart, the fight for liberation collapsed. Someone needed to save them. Asa needed to save them. Asa had the advantage and soldiers didn't. She knew their hiding spots. As the remaining bystanders on the street began to be evacuated, helicopters flying overhead, Asa ran. She ran against the tide, pushing against the bodies running away, ducking down the side of the building. The most obvious place would be where they were planning to go after they pulled off their heist, but now they were carrying an injured person, they'd likely go wherever was closest and secure. There was a small warehouse where they'd stayed one night that could keep them covered while they tried to patch their leader up. Asa panted for more air, hoping her instincts were right. Her feet skidded to a halt as she saw she wasn't the only one headed this way. A squad of soldiers were also going in the same direction, and would go right by where Asa knew the villains were likely to be. Do something, her mind screamed. But would she really be able to step out of the shadows, be a part of something big like this? What if she led them elsewhere, and elsewhere was where the Liberators were really headed? Or what if the soldiers ignored her? She ran up to the soldiers, calling out, Hey! Hey! A soldier raised a hand for the squadron to stop, turning to her. What is it? I saw those villains, the ones who were just in the CPO building. Asa quickly pulled her sleeve down, ensuring the purple mark and her forearm were covered. They were running off that way! Asa pointed to a path she was sure didn't have any of their immediate hiding spots. You're sure? One of them had blue hair and they were struggling to carry someone, Asa said, her breath heavy. They're close by. The soldier hesitated for a moment, before nodding and turning to his squad. Alright, head out west. He turned to Asa with a stern face. You best be right. Thank you for your assistance. The soldiers broke out into a run once more, heading down the street where Asa had misguided them. She took in a deep breath, surprised that her trick had worked, praying she was right about where the villains were headed. Time was running out if she wanted to save control, her legs breaking into a run. The warehouse came into sight, Asa dropping into a crouch to look through the gap in the steel where she'd watched them previously. She breathed in a sigh of relief. They were in there. The three of them were crowded around their leader, panicking and trying to soak up the blood with one of their shirts. Their leader was going to die. This was Asa's chance. She went around to the exit, squeezing under the gap in the building to make her way inside. They didn't notice her, too preoccupied in the blood and the bullet to notice. Asa put her hands up, slowly making her way over. Should she say something? Um, hey. They shot to attention immediately, a whip cracking millimetres away from her head, a squeak emerging from Asa. They were ready to fight. 
Ace's hands shot up further. I am not here to hurt you. Who the hell are you? Rip called out. I'm a healer, Ace exclaimed. I can heal your friend. Please, I want them to live too. They all hesitated, staring down at the body of their mentor, their leader, their friend, who was taking in shallow, raspy breaths of air, but not for very long. How do we know we can trust you? The interceptor asked. Asa didn't know what to say. What would make them trust her? I just guided a group of soldiers away from the direction you were, Asa suggested. And I really am a healer. I can just heal them and go. They all looked amongst each other, deciding what to do. What other choice do we have? Smokebomb whispered, his hands shaking as he knelt beside its control. Whip made a low growling noise. Heal them and get out of here. Try anything funny and I'll whip you to death. Asa nodded and hurriedly rushed forward, crouching down beside control. Their face was strong like chiseled marble, even as it was twisted in pain. The bullet wound was deep, piercing through their chest and barely missing their heart. Blood was pulling out fast. Control peeled their eyes open for a brief moment, blue eyes emerging, their eyebrows furrowed in confusion at the unknown person beside them. It'll all be over soon, Asa told them. Asa whipped out the knife she kept against her forearm in a flash, a well-rehearsed move, and slashed it across the leader's throat. They were dead in an instant. Smokebomb screamed and fell back, the others gasping. For a moment they were all still, hands over mouths, mouths hanging open, mouths releasing screams. Let me explain, Asa began. A slash of pain blossomed across her face, a whip cracking across her cheek and knocking Asa back. She held her cheek and gasped in shock. The hell have you done? Whip exclaimed, looming over Asa. Her eyes were wide, whips dancing through the air, snakes searching for prey. How could you? I told you, if you have tried anything, I'd whip you to death. Her lips were twisted into a wicked grin. I'm a woman of my word. Asa got to her feet, staggering back. Wait! Why the hell did you kill them? The interceptor screamed, tears falling off her face. Who the hell are you? I'll ask when I see them in the afterlife. Whip lashed out again, Asa ducking into a roll to avoid the ten whips headed her way. She landed in a crouch, ready to dodge the next move. If only they'd give her a chance to explain. More whips came towards her, two of them catching her arm, a deep stinging pain making Asa's teeth clench. Payne was an old friend who she could easily stand being around. She still had the knife, so unless she was stupid, this wouldn't kill her. The interceptor came around the side of her with a swinging fist Asa narrowly dodged. The next fist created an opening where Asa could kick the interceptor in the stomach, giving her space to move as she staggered back. Listen to me, Asa yelled. She was met with all wh whips, one hitting her arm in the spot she'd previously been hit. The pain was hot and piercing. Tears sparking in Asa's eyes and clouding her vision. Another whip hit, one she couldn't avoid, the interceptor grabbing her from behind, wrapping an arm around her throat and squeezing. Asa's eyes widened, the air unable to come into her lungs. She kicked and squirmed, trying to pull the arm away from her neck. The knife fell from her limp grasp. There was no way out of this. Wait, stop, stop! Smokebomb's voice echoed through the air. The tightness around Asa's throat eased for a moment, allowing a breath to enter her lungs. She hit the ground, gasping for air. The world was blurry, her strangled breath consuming her attention. When the world finally became clear again, Control was sitting up, alive. Their clothes blood splattered, but wounds entirely healed. Asa grinned. The hell? Whip breathed. The whips retracting and returning to normal fingers. Reese, you're okay! Smoke bomb breathed, reaching out to clasp their arms. How are you alive? You were dead! Asa had never heard their real name before. It suited them. The rest of their crew fell down beside them, inspecting them and finding not even a scar remaining on their throat or chest. Control turned to look at Asa. And who is our guest? They asked, looking Asa up and down. The hell is your power? The interceptor asked. You claim to be a healer, motor control and then they magically raise from the dead. What gives? I am a healer, Asa said, swallowing. She pulled up her sleeve and showed the back of her hand. But I'm also a purple, like most of you. The only way I can heal someone is by killing them. Once they're dead, all their injuries heal, and they resurrect. 
We're pissed. You could have told us that earlier. If I told you I had to kill them, you wouldn't believe me, and then Control really would die. Control's head tilted. What an interesting power. Lisa's heart raced. Control was talking to her. A healer who kills to save. I'm sure life hasn't been easy. I'm sure life hasn't been easy. Control didn't know the half of it. Everyone who's ever been born with a healing power has been treated like a saint, been called a blessing to this world, Asa blurted. For me, I've been called nothing but a monster. Believe me, you're amongst people who feel your pain. Control got up off the ground, the others looking at them worriedly. Why were you so determined to heal me? You know our villain names, and you know where to find us. They smirked. It's almost like we've got a fan. Asa swallowed, still high from the fight and shocked to have control so close to her. I just... You guys are willing to make people listen. My whole life I've stayed in the shadows, because when people like us speak up, we're shut down. But you guys don't waver. You stand your ground and keep fighting. CPO have bred discrimination and call it protection, have made us feel worthless when we're really the strongest. I couldn't just let you die. The words spilled out like a broken dam. She bit her lip, looking at the group of people before her, their bitter faces. I'm sorry, you're all mad at me. I'll just go. If you would make that choice, Control mused. Asa blinked. What? You just saved my life. Technically, I'm in your debt. Most people would be making demands. All I wanted was to give you a chance to keep fighting. I don't need anything else. Control looked her up and down. Why don't I make you an offer then? Asa said nothing, the other staring at Control incredulously. Today, if it weren't for me getting shot, we could have fought our way through that crowd of soldiers. They wouldn't have stood a chance. They're not allowed to use their powers. Instead, we had to retreat. But if we had a healer in our party, Control blew out their cheeks. The odds could have been a lot different. Control was looking at Asa like they're expecting an answer. What are you saying? I'm proposing you join our party, Control said. You'll start on trial at first, of course, to prove that you are useful and aren't some spy. But if you prove yourself valuable, I'd be more than happy to have you. Asa's hand clutched her chest. Is this real? Control, you're sure about this? Whip asked them. I'm sure, Control said. They're nothing we can't handle. So, how about it? If you stick with us, you might just get to take down the CPO. No more labels, no more boxes. Only liberation. Only liberation. Control's words made her feel warm. No, hot, burning even. The fire in her body stoked by the words, the embers dancing to life. Asa looked Control in the eye. Yes. Control smiled. Then let's get to work. Thank you for listening to my audio story, Healing Hands, and I hope that you did enjoy it. I've always loved getting to explore the concept of a superhuman society, and so this was just a little concept idea that I liked getting to play around with and thought that I would share with you guys. So thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a like so that you can help support the channel, and I also know that people like this type of content. I have an older audio story that I did called Haunted, and I will leave a card to that above if you want to check it out. And if you want more content from me, be sure to subscribe to the channel as I do weekly uploads. And if you want to see more of my previous content, stick around to the end screen to have more videos recommended to you. And that's all from me. Thank you once again for watching. Bye!